Hello Internet, my name is Paul and today I'm going to be demonstrating something that's not exactly new information, but some people don't know about it and uh, may find this useful. I know there are other tutorials available, but I don't think they show exactly something exactly similar, so I just figured I'd make my own. Also, I needed a reason to test my new microphone, um, so let me know if you can hear me alright. <laughs> Anyways, so I'll start off by saying I I love Windows 7. I really enjoy it. Um, but a lot of people were really used to how the uh, the old Windows taskbars worked, like XP and uh, Vista, uh, as opposed to this more dock-like system. Now I don't mind this. In fact, this is my personal computer I use. Uh, and I, I will I like it just just fine. <clears throat> However, like when I'm at work, uh, my work machine is XP, and so I I still have a lot of you know I'm working on that a lot, so I'm more used to that feel, uh, to be honest. So on my laptop, which I also use for programming, <clears throat> which is uh, what I do, uh, I have it set up in a way so the 7 taskbar works more like uh, Vista or XP so <clears throat> I'm just going to be demonstrating how to change it back kind of or tweak it alright so your uh, taskbar probably looks, probably looks something like this um, so to begin with uh, I like to well, there is a couple steps. I'm not going to remove these right away, just because it's easier to see where the actual Windows 7 taskbar is by leaving them there. I'll uh, unpin a couple that I won't really need there. I just want to have a couple there to show me where the bar still is. So, first, start by unlocking the bar. <clears throat> then what you want to do is right-click the bar and go into Properties. From here, there is a couple things you should check. One is use small icons. You can apply it at any point just to see what's going to happen. Another small. And then this one um, it says always combine hide labels. That's fairly certain the default. You can select either of these two. Combine when taskbar is full or never combine. I recommend the, the first one, this combine when taskbar is full. So now as you can see, it has it laid out more like the, uh, it's, it's starting to look like it already. <clears throat> However, a lot of people with their tutorials will stop here. And they'll say, okay, that's good enough, you know. I still have it, it works just like normal. Well, not exactly, because if this was my quick launch, I mean, in this to next P, could you really do this? You know, have one of your tabs way over here and then these things still black? No, you couldn't. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you the rest, how to make like, a uh, makeshift quick launch that works just like XP or Vista. So go into wherever you'd like and create a new folder. <clears throat> Alright, I'm going to make it called quick launch. And I'm actually going to make a separate folder. You don't need to do this if you don't want. The only reason I do it is because I like a little bit of space between my quick launch. So say this is my quick launch and these are my tabs. I like a little bit of space between it, so I make another folder. And I just call it space or space or whatever you want to call it. It's fine. <clears throat> so in here, uh, what we're going to... this folder is going to contain all of the items that you want in your quick launch bar. So, well, let's say I want uh, Skype. So, um, let's, uh, well, I'm not going to create a link. I want to create a shortcut. You know, there's a few different ways you can do that, but I'm just going to go into my programs. Uh, 
because I don't want to copy a link to a something in my what do you call it start menu hmm maybe in program files no you know what whatever doesn't really matter I'll do start by doing Chrome I would just right click it if it's under programs you can see it's the actual exe so I copy it and over here you can either paste or paste shortcut. I don't think it really matters. And it'll still come out as a shortcut, see? So there's Google Chrome. Let's add a couple other ones. Uh, Eclipse. Uh, maybe that'll work. Yep, I guess that just works if you just drag in and link that. So do Skype too. Anything else? Um, putty. Uh, something I use a lot. I don't know what else. Here's just, just an example, so that should be enough, you know, Outlook or whatever you want. This is your quick launch. Uh, the space folder, you just can leave completely empty. Alright, then you can close that out. Now I'm going to right click on the taskbar again, go up to toolbars, and click new toolbar. I'm going to navigate to where I made that folder, so in my case that was right on my C drive and down one called quick launch all right so now I have quick launch it's not exactly looking like a quick launch yet I can make it bigger and it'll still not look like a quick launch we'll we'll get to that so I'm gonna click on this little thing here it looks like a series of dots and I'm just gonna drag it to the left of my um, Windows 7 taskbar now at this point uh, <clears throat> I'm going to I'm going to scoot this over a little bit so you can still see. This is. So here's my quick launch over here, and here's my Windows 7 taskbar. And at this point, I'm going to unpin these other ones because it's just starting to kind of get all messed up. All right. So now, I'm also going to. I want to. Basically, I don't want this to say quick launch, and I don't want the words after these. So I'm going to make this bigger just so I have somewhere to click. Uh, I right click in there, and up here, you want to deselect show text and deselect show title um, alright then you can bring that back down if you like alright and you can uh, relock it if you want um, I like to uh, the reason I wouldn't leave it here is because I like to have a little bit of space between my quick launch and my start button. I think I may have said that backwards earlier. So I'm going to unlock it. And I'm actually going to do the same process now. Right click, toolbars, new, go back up to C where I saved them. I'm going to use the space. Alright, and that's over here now. I'm going to grab it and do the same thing. And sometimes this doesn't always work the best. That actually worked for for a first. That's good. Sometimes it'll space it out all weird or it'll create two layers. Eh, it just depends. Um, <clears throat> so that's how I'd set it up like that and then just right click and get rid of the text or sorry the title. <clears throat> just move the slider a little bit till you're happy. Remember <clears throat> whenever you lock it they're gonna all everything is gonna shift to the left. Maybe half the size of an icon, just, just keep that in mind. So I move that to about there. About there. I'm very picky. Um, and something I like to do, uh, I mean, you might be fine with, you know, uh, this. I mean, it'll work just like XP and Vista. Um, but I actually usually have like a billion things open so I like to go up to the second layer like this a couple of reasons uh, I can put a lot more quick launches because I like to have a lot of uh, I put all my applications down here my IDE, Skype, my uh, email, uh, Putty, things like that I have one SCP too um, and another reason is I like the full date over here I know it's crazy but it tells me the day and the date I like that so I'm just going to scoot this over a bit more now, as if it's an even number of icons, I'm super OCD about that too. Anyways, alright, so, 
Now I can uh, lock it again and it should be good to go. That's just as it should be. <clears throat> now the theme is still very 7 and Vista E. Um, that's all able to be changed as well. Um, I can uh, right click on the desktop and go to personalize. Sorry, it opened up on my other monitor. All right. Uh, here we go. All right. So, for the Windows color, uh, get rid of transparency. Put it over to like a bluish color, and uh, show the color mixer. You want to have this somewhere in the mid blue range, uh, and just you know fiddle with the the sliders until you get that uh, Windows XP color that you know and love. Uh, I'm kind of getting into purple. It looks like, oh, you know what? I'm going to put the intensity all the way up. There we go. That looks better. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure how well it looks on the recording. Um, just kind of going by uh, a guess here. You know, you can use you can use reference or whatever you like. That's what I did originally, or whatever color you like. I'm just doing this because it's more consistent with uh, Windows XP, so that's what I was used to. So you can go ahead and save that, and uh, yeah, then you're good to go. Then it'll work and look just like uh, XP and Vista. And all these shortcuts will work, and they'll open up over here, not on top of the icon or anything. You can open up a bunch of different ones too, it won't tab it together like that. Otherwise, um, you can also have, uh, you know, multiple tabs still. Now it'll still be in one browser tab, but, or, yeah. But uh, I think that's pretty much all I had for today. I just wanted to show everyone <coughs> the how to do that so uh, any questions shoot me an email or message on uh, YouTube and I'll get back to you when I can thanks